Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 39, and today we're talking about LFOs, or low frequency oscillators. So what the heck do these things do? So low frequency oscillators are a low frequency oscillator, something that oscillates at a very slow or low frequency. That being said, it's basically a cyclic shape that keeps going and keeps going and keeps going, but we need to tell it how fast we want it to go. We need to tell it what shape it has. We need to tell if it's bipolar or unipolar, which we're gonna get into and not to mention all the stuff we can use with that shape to change different types of things that we can modulate with. So for this demonstration, I am in an analog engine saw wave just as the envelope video and a basic uh, saw wave. Turn that down just a little bit here. So if we go to the LFO tab here, we were previously in the envelopes, but let's select this LFO here. Now these little yellow things are very interesting and the updates to Pigments 4 makes it that much easier to use. Before to make different types of shapes, we would kind of have to move with these knobs and kind of like you know, kind of get there in a more difficult way, but what's nice is we have these presets here. So right now, by default, it's selected on a sine wave. So if we have the sine wave, let's drag this LFO one and let's go to the cutoff here. Do something kind of like that. Now, this is just going to be moving it as a sine wave. However, we can select the triangle or a square which is kind of just an on off one zero type of thing, or we can do a saw or an inverted saw or random, which is, this is cool as well. It looks like the square, but don't let that fool you because you're, you're going to have different values throughout the whole time. It's going to be random. And we can see how the filter moves in different little spots like that as well, which is very cool that, uh, that is there. So the next thing I think we should point out before we really get into more of these knobs is the difference of unipolar and bipolar. So for example, if we're going back to our sine wave here and we see that this, this modulation amount is gonna be moving within this yellow band here, this yellow kind of circle over here once we hover our mouse over it. And it might be hard to see, but we can see that this blue dot kind of going back and forth and back and forth, right? So that's gonna be the same movement as this dot going through the LFO. Now by bipolar, what I mean by that is the middle point of this knob, this cutoff is this, where this little like black line is. Now it's gonna be going left and right and left and right. So positive, negative, positive, negative. And we can see that here, this middle line here is going positive and then it goes negative and it goes positive and then negative. So it's bipolar, it has two poles, the positive pole and the negative pole. Now we can change that by deselecting this bipolar and we deselect that now it's gonna still be this curvy shape but now it's only unipolar, it's only positive. So we can look here and now it's only moving it from this black point forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, basically changing the timing. So if we go to bipolar again, it's going to go all the way to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, kind of hovering around this middle point here. And then unipolar is going to be just like this, kind of the beginning is going to be where this line is, and then it's going to draw its shape and then go back. So that's kind of the difference there. Envelopes are always going to be unipolar where LFOs can be either or. So that's a big difference. And it's going to come in handy once we start modulating different types of things. So Thought I'd mention that to kind of get that out of the way. It's a very important concept there. And uh, yeah, so let's put this back to bipolar and kind of take advantage of that as well. So here on the rate, we can choose, this is like I was saying, how fast we want this to move. Now, right now we're in Hertz, so we can definitely choose how fast we want to go. Generally, LFOs were so low frequency that mainly it was gonna be about 20 Hertz was their max, because it was basically in range that we couldn't hear, but it was used to modulate stuff that we could hear. So that's kind of why they were low frequency. However, here now in digital, we can also go all the way up to 200 Hertz, which is well above our hearing range from 20. So that's kind of cool. We have that extra option there if we want to do that, dial it in by Hertz if we'd like to, but we can also do it into sync so we can sync something with our tempo. So that's a one over four, so it's a very easy thing to do like that. And sometimes what's nice here, if we, we have it on sync, we can go through different values here, but there's a lot of values to go through here. So this menu is kind of helpful. So if we go to straight only, then we have like half, quarter, eight, 16, 32, and so on and so forth. So it might be a little bit more familiar to you by using this menu here. Let's turn this up a little bit here. 
And the cool part about this rate knob is we have this little plus here. And then anytime we see this little plus here, that means this knob is available to be modulated with whatever we want to modulate it with. So as before, we can click this plus, and now this opens all our modulation windows and it asks us, what source do you want to use to make this rate knob move? Now we can always individually drag things here like that. We can do it that way. Or as before, we can drag, let's say like function number one, drag this all the way over here and then plop it right down over there. And now this function knob is going to be controlling this rate. And if we go over to like one half, we can make stuff like that happen. So we'll be talking about functions in the next video, but I thought I'd just mention that as well because this is a cool knob to be able to automate. So yeah, moving on from there, we can change the waveform here. So on the left, it's going to be sine. And as we move this here, we can see it's going to percentage from sine on the left to triangle on the right. And now all the way in triangle, it's going to be this triangle. So we can do it with this knob here. We can go all the way to square or really anywhere in between, whatever we want to change, which is kind of cool. We're not just locked into these specific basic shapes. We do have that interpolation to kind of fade in between the two, which is really nice. Kind of like how the uh, on the sample engine, how we could morph between different types of simple basic waveforms going over here for the wavetable we can go to the uh, morph knob here and that's kind of how we change this position up here this would be you know kind of quantized and we go to the morph and it's kind of changing it just like that right so that's kind of the same concept that we were are doing over here by changing these waveforms like that it's kind of going in between the different shapes now as we go all the way to the right it's going to be a sample and hold and all the way to the left is signed, but we don't have to be restricted to this waveform. We can select the different presets, which is going to change these knobs automatically and basically lock in that preset, which is very nice. It's very quick to get your idea across. So moving on from there, we have, again, this retrigger source, which I covered in the, uh, in the envelope video. And this is basically saying, what do we want this envelope to be triggered by? We can say this, this, or this, L, this LFO can be triggered by the sequence star, the sequence clock, so on and so forth. If you'd like a full explanation of these, check out the envelope video because we went through all of these uh, different uh, options here. So right now it's going to be on poly keyboard, so our keyboard is going to restart this wave cycle. Now, one thing I do want to mention, though, that wasn't in the envelope is going to be free running. So every time we hit a note here, you can see how every time I hit a note, it's going to redraw the cycle here. Now, that's because every time I hit the note on the keyboard, it's going to restart this cycle from the beginning. Now, if we just want this LFO to be a free running stallion through the planes of some type of nice geographical place of this world, then we can select poly poly kbd and then we can go to free running here and now it doesn't matter what note we press this this lfo is going to move irrespectively of what we do which is going to constantly keep going it's going to be free as a bird which is very helpful because there's times where you definitely don't want an lfo to be re-triggered every time you hit a note you just want it to kind of do its own thing so that's the only difference here between the envelope menu as well so let's go back to poly keyboard and obviously you can't tell it itself to re-trigger itself because that's that's black magic right there you don't even want to get into that so moving on from there we have this smooth which is kind of cool here so let's say we have this square wave which is a very harsh type of shape it's on there's like z no value in between this is on off on off so on and so forth but if we want some type of smoothness and kind of some fades <laughs> We can kind of adjust this smooth knob and it gives some nice contour, a little uh, nice curves to our uh, to our shape there. And this works with all the waveforms as well. And it's also very nice too on the random. Instead of having just so harsh different values, it kind of gives a little bit of a fade and a little makes these, these values a little smoother. So definitely check out this... Uh, this setting here and we have some different options as well as key tracking <laughs> it's like the matrix kind of thing yeah so it's basically modifying the rate of the lfo on the keyboard Definitely pretty cool there. And then fade. And 
Let's maybe do a square wave for this. Make it a little bit easy here. And we can see it's, it might be hard, kind of hard to see on the video here, but there's going to be a slight little overlay that kind of shows the fade in of this. It's kind of an attack, I guess you can call it kind of like that. But yeah, that's basically this, these knobs here in a nutshell here. Smooth is probably my favorite. Uh, keyboard dragging is pretty cool if you want to use that. Options always available. But smooth is definitely my favorite for these options here. But they all have their different types of purposes. Now the last one that's also very important here is called phase. So as we see here, the beginning of the cycle here is going to start at zero because this waveform, if you think of it in a circle 360 degrees, that's going to be the entire circle of the entire waveform. So that being said, we can go all the way to the top of 360, which is basically the exact same as going from zero. Now, let's say instead of you, this, uh, let's say instead of this, the cycle going from the zero all the way to the top down to the bottom, you can have it start at about 90 degrees, something like that. And it's going to start up here at its max value and then kind of move on from there. Or if you wanted to do it in an inverted way, you do 180, basically some basic math, 90, 180, so on and so forth. And you can kind of, uh, go to the in-between spots of those waveforms. So it's definitely useful to use if you need to change different phases or where you want the values of those things to start. And it's also modulatable, which is very interesting right there. So if we had our phase here and we had LFO2 modulating this phase. Just weird stuff you can do with this. And that's why it's so cool because there's so many different strange options that you can do with these and have different things trigger stuff and modulate different stuff. So it gets very, very in-depth very, very quickly. So those are the LFOs in a nutshell. Hopefully that uh, you learned something from there. I hope so. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one where we're going to start talking about functions, which is very cool because it's almost like a extended version of envelopes and LFOs with whole different lots of different menus so look forward to that one and we additionally have three as well as we have th the three envelopes three lfos three functions and so on and so forth and there's a lot of cool stuff to look forward to as well as lots of presets so that's going to be exciting we will see you in the next video and thanks for watching